Hey, hey, this is Mark Rodriguez. And I'm Brian from Another Terrible Idea, and you're watching the Video Game Masters. Alright guys, so in this episode, we're going to cover a game that's been requested for a while now, and I finally got my hands on it, so we're going to be talking about DuckTales Remastered for the Xbox 360. Now as you know, this game is based on the original Nintendo 8-bit version of DuckTales, and while I still do have my good old Nintendo Entertainment System, that's my baby, I've never had DuckTales for Nintendo, so I can only honestly cover DuckTales Remastered. Yeah. Well, I played both the original NES version and the remastered, so I'll be comparing the two versions. That's right. And without further ado, let's check out DuckTales and Nintendo version and DuckTales Remastered. But first, let's check out the show behind the games. DuckTales hit TV in September of 1987 and was based on the adventures of Scrooge McDuck, the richest duck in the world, and his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie left in his care by none other but Donald Duck himself. The series would often follow Scrooge's quest for treasure to become even richer, often running into some of his enemies. Flint Hart Glomgold was the second richest duck in the world and would stoop to new lows to surpass his rival. Magicka the Spell wanted to rule the world with a spell using Scrooge's number one dime, and the Beagle Boys just wanted to rob Scrooge's money bin all the time. The series had 100 episodes spread across 4 seasons and a feature film called DuckTales the Movie Treasure of the Lost Lamp released in theaters in 1990. And also this cartoon has probably one of the most catchiest theme songs ever. With such a popular show, DuckTales soon had a game on the NES produced by Capcom in 1989. Very similar to the Mega Man games, DuckTales lets you choose which stage to start from. You play as Scrooge McDuck as you travel through five different stages to collect the treasures within those areas. The five areas are the Amazon, where you face all kinds of jungle creatures, the African Mines, which takes you deep underground, the Himalayas, full of ice and snow, where you actually get stuck in the snow if you're not careful, Transylvania is full of ghosts and mummies, as you would expect, and finally, your adventure even takes you to the moon, where you face space aliens and robots, and one of the greatest themes in NES history. As a platform game, Scrooge's main form of attack is jumping up and bouncing off enemy heads using his cane as a pogo stick. He can even swing his cane to send rocks into enemies like a golf club. The game is also full of all sorts of gems to collect in hidden blocks, boulders, and other areas. You can only take three hits and you have three lives to finish the stage. You can also find items that replenish your health, or even add an extra heart to your hit points. After you beat all five stages, you have to face Dracula Duck, as well as your old enemies Flintheart Glumgold and Magicka Dispel. The game was very successful and considered one of the best games on the NES. The remastered version came out for the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2013 by Wayfor Entertainment. The game features amazing graphics while still keeping the 2D style gameplay of the original. The remastered version plays heavy into the story with a lot of cutscenes, featuring voice acting for all the characters, most of them using the surviving actors from the original show. Now that's pretty awesome. This time, the game starts with a brand new stage which serves as the game's tutorial mode in which Scrooge has to rescue his nephews from the Beagle Boys and stop them from robbing his money bin. After he succeeds, he finds a treasure map hidden within the painting that the Beagle Boys are trying to steal, and that inspires him to start the search for the five sacred treasures in different parts of the world. The stages are pretty much the same, just with modern graphics and music. Each stage also throws an extra quest that has to be completed before you can advance. For example, in the Amazon, Scrooge has to find all five giant gold coins to find the temple that he's looking for, and on the moon, he has to find the pieces of the Gizmo Duck suit to advance. After getting all five treasures, you have to face Magicka the Spell as he tries to awaken Dracula Duck and a brand new stage on Mount Vesuvius. The game's normal mode follows the 3 hits and 3 lives style like in the classic Nintendo game, but the easy mode lets you take twice as many hits and give you as many tries as you need to finish the stages. And yeah, I'm not even going to touch the hard mode. This game also lets you set the Scrooge Pogo Jump on automatic if you need to. With the money you collect throughout the game, you can now unlock concept art from the game and the show, and even unlock the classic NES stage music to bring back those old school memories. As previously mentioned, DuckTales for the NES was a very successful game, and it had a copy for the Game Boy as well. There was also a DuckTales 2, released in 1993, which is probably not as popular as the first game, since it was very late in the NES's lifespan, and not quite so easy to find. 
Alright guys, so now it's time for my thoughts on the game. And like I said, I only played DuckTales Remastered, I can only cover that one. And again, it's a lot of fun, I really enjoyed playing it. And I love all the graphics, all the character detail, all the extra animation, like whenever Scrooge gets caught by a plant or stuck on ice, it's all pretty cool. The background stages have been redrawn beautifully. I love all the extra details with stuff going on in the far off background, that's all pretty cool. And you even get new stages too, that's pretty cool too. And as for the music, it's also very, very catchy. Had the Amazon theme stuck in my head for the longest time time it's just that catchy. Now the game itself is just one big old nostalgia trip. Like I'm sure if you guys played the original Nintendo version this game just takes you back to those good old 8-bit glory days. Or if you guys have never played the Nintendo version and you're just a fan of the show, I'm sure all the cutscenes and all the voiceovers will take you back to the good old days when DuckTales was still on TV and you're running home after school to watch the latest episode. Man, those were the days. And I can't believe they actually grabbed Alan Young himself, the voice actor of Scrooge McDuck from the original cartoon show, and he voiced the character in this game. That's pretty awesome. He's like over 90, and he still grabbed them for this game. And like all the other surviving voice actors are still here to voice all their characters, and it makes it just feel that much more authentic and that much more nostalgic. That's pretty awesome. Like, way to go, way forward, for pulling that one off. Now, one thing I forgot about the game is that this is based on a Nintendo game, so the game is... Nintendo tough, it's Capcom tough, and it's Mega Man tough. Yes, this game only gives you three hits and three lives to get through it, and it's pretty tough. The stages are very long and very demanding, considering you can only take three hits, and the bosses are also pretty intense. They don't take just three hits like in the Nintendo games, like in the Mario games, you know? They take like about, I don't know, maybe six or maybe eight hits, and they got all this other extra stuff to avoid too. They have like all these like falling pillars and big walls of fire, or they have transformations and a whole bunch of extra crap, and you gotta survive all this with only three hits. And the thing is, that just like Mega Man, if you die all three times, even if you're up against the boss, and you die you got to continue all over again from the beginning of the stage and oh my god that was so frustrating but I keep telling myself that remember that's how Mega Man was itself that's all it was back then and um, yeah the game does have like extra heart containers you could take more hits but the thing is you still got to finish the whole stage you still got to beat the boss if you continue or if you choose like some other stage you're still down to three hits until you can actually finish that whole stage I had to go and play easy mode to get through it because it was just kind of tough I have to get used to it the easy mode is not exactly a cakewalk but it does make it a little bit easier because you can take like twice as much damage it makes it a little bit more manageable now one thing I heard about other people complaining is that all the cutscenes though like I guess there's just a lot of them you know everything every time you find an item or something or every time like you take a couple of steps some event happens something happens here and there someone gets kidnapped or you gotta rescue or you gotta find these pieces or these coins and whatever and um yeah for some people it does get kind of old pretty fast because i mean the nintendo version you're just running around it's just all hop and pop action not so many cutscenes and i do admit that if you die and continue a lot and we start the stage, it does get pretty old, like if you die in the Amazon and the boss killed like about two or three times, it does get pretty old to go back to the beginning and every time Scrooge finds a coin, oh yes, another golden coin, like it does get pretty old pretty fast, I, I do admit that, but luckily you can still skip them, you're not really forced to just sit through them, you can just pause the game and just skip through it, and yeah, after I've seen all the cutscenes like maybe once or twice, I do kind of just skip through them to just keep going with the game, but other than that, the game is still a lot of fun, it's pretty awesome, if you're a fan of DuckTales, the original version, or just to show in general this game is a lot of fun I recommend you check it out and if you're not that much of a fan but you like these kind of like you know hop and bop and platforming games and side scrolling games then yeah just just give it a try just check it out it's pretty cool like I said it's worth a shot comparing the two the biggest difference I have to say is probably the level of difficulty the remastered version is so much easier than the NES I don't know if it's the automated pogo I don't know if it's just familiarity with the controller again, but going back and playing the NES copy today was so much harder than going through the uh, Xbox 360 version. The original NES version is just a much tougher road to hoe. So if you're looking for a nice fun game, they're both there, but you're looking for something that you can just sit down and enjoy, I would go for the remaster. Another great thing about the remastered version is the art gallery mode, where you can unlock sketches, you can unlock background paintings, you can unlock the new and old music, you can even unlock a way to play the new game with the original 8-bit soundtrack, which is super fun, especially the beloved Moon Stage. One thing I have to say is that this game really holds testament to just how good it was and how it ranked up to be one of the best NES games ever. 
This remake was made solely on the fact that the game itself was so much fun, despite the fact it was based on an existing property. DuckTales itself ended in the 90s, and so far there's been no new series or toy line to warrant making a new game, other than the fact that this game is just that good. There's a DuckTales remake in the works for 2017, but this was made back in 2013, way before any of that, so this game really is just that good. Oh, so that's where Mighty Final Fight was. That's pretty cool. So, oh, um, anyways, guys, that wraps up this episode of Video Game Masters, and as always, this is Mark Rodriguez. And this is Brian from Another Terrible Idea. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next awesome episode.